So how long have you been practicing yoga? Let's start with that. Uh, probably eight years or so. And what got you into yoga? Um, probably like the exercise part of it, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, there was a studio that did uh, stationary sequence near me, uh, and I think they did a Sunday community class. Well, I know that they did. They did a community class, and it was a donation-based um, class, so a lot of people I knew went there, and um, I just like went because it was like five dollars, and um, I just really liked it. And then, you know, I guess like it's very like little by little. So I don't know. I hear people talk about. Um, I'll say, oh, how long have you been practicing? And they're always like, well, like, you know, I don't practice very much anymore. But and mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, but you still have been practicing, you know, yeah. such and such time. So. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's, I just kind of liked it for the, like, the exercise element, and, yeah, it, like, really, like, toned my body really nicely, so mm -hmm. that's kind of why I first liked it. At what point, then, did, um, did you decide to become a teacher, and why? When I moved to Columbus, I was just kind of looking for something to get into, and, um, sort of, like, expand my knowledge on, and, uh, I guess... You know, I started, I didn't mention this before, but I started practicing with people that were in recovery, because mm -hmm. um, I've been in recovery from drugs, it's hard to not notice the camera, but <laughs> yeah, I've been in um, recovery from like drugs and alcohol for like, for nine years, I just celebrated my nine years. Good job. Um, thank you. And um, so, I don't know how that ties into what I was going to say, but, um, but I guess just like kind of looking for ways to give back that were different than just like my regular like meeting attendance and things like that so I, I kind of thought yoga would be a good way to like be in service but like not be talking about drugs and alcohol at the time like yeah. still have the same message um so I came to Columbus and I didn't know anybody and so I thought that'd be something to do I'd say you know yoga is like an extension of my recovery process so like the 11th step in the, out of the 12, you know, yeah. um, is, um, you know, seeking through prayer and meditation to improve a conscious contact with God. So, uh, yoga for me, like, does that, you know, um, so it's an extension of it, I guess I would say, um, I would almost argue that, like, yoga has been, like, better than, like, my recovery process in that it's, like, very consistent, maybe that's because, the traditional practice is like sort of perfect in a sense, if I could say, whereas like, you know, the meetings and recovery is run by people. So there's, a, mm, you I know, see. there's places for error or like, um, yeah, just like human error in the practice of the steps and, and things. So like the steps I believe to be pretty pure and perfect in their layout, but, mm -hmm. um, but yoga, um, the actual like, practice the whole thing is pretty perfect so how has your personal practice changed since you started teaching or has it mm. uh, I don't practice as much <laughs> my, my should join you know, the ranks my asana practice is uh, pretty limited uh, mm -hmm. so but I think that my it's similar with my 12-step process too like um, when I know that I'm going to be showing up for students, I, I care more about if I know what I'm talking about. I don't mm -hmm. want to do or say things that are like out of my realm of understanding or current practice. I, honestly, it's, for, it's forced me to continue to show up right now because um, I just had a baby and um, I just feel like I don't have any time for myself like, or I can't seem to like find the space for it you mm -hmm. know so when I'm showing up to teach for other people it forces me to say like hey like you got people they might come to class tomorrow like you can't you know you need to write up your yeah your uh, sequence you need to like open a book <laughs> you know like <laughs> right you need to like stand in Tadasana like you need to like do something <laughs> do you know something. <laughs> you need to like sit down for a minute you know mm -hmm. um so so yeah it's really been saving me and like having any practice at all how do you feel or do you feel that yoga had a positive or any sort of impact mm. on your pregnancy and then post delivery mm. oh gosh so much <laughs> like so much 
Um, yeah, I practiced my teacher training through my whole pregnancy. Oh, interesting. Yep. Um, so he was with me for the whole process. And, uh, gosh, I just felt great. <laughs> like, you know, like my body felt really good the whole time. Um, I mean, emotionally, I was kind of a wreck when I was pregnant. I was kind of really depressed, but <laughs> I'm sure the yoga, like, helped me. I was a maniac. I was, like, so angry and, like, just probably the hormones, um, so, but gosh, yeah, like, I felt like, I mean, I looked really good, like, I looked healthy, um, my weight gain was healthy, um, I didn't have a lot of back problems, uh, I did a prenatal class, too, I, um, I mean, it was as good as it could be, for wow. carrying a child, I yeah. mean, I don't know, um, so I attribute a lot of it to my yoga practice, um, I had pretty intense weekend trainings once a month, so I just practiced, like, all weekend and a couple times a week, and, um, and then post postpartum, I mean, I haven't been to many of my own yoga classes that I've just gone to practice for, but um, I will say I just do little things like <laughs> like pull my shoulders away from my ears, like pull my belly button in, like so just those little tweaks from like holding a baby all day and from sleeping with a baby, um, you know, it really it's wearing on me. So yeah. Um, so yeah, it's really helped me with that, and my body also like bounced back pretty quickly. Like I, I feel like, you know, I'm sure that there were some changes that happened, but it felt, you know, I feel pretty back to myself. Having become a teacher, um, what are some challenges that you've run into? Hmm. There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> so it hasn't been all, you know, unicorns and light. Having become a yoga teacher? Oh, you know, no. I, a lot of it's probably in my head, but I mean, I'll just share what my reality feels like in there, you know. So um, I feel um, challenges with, there's so many like problems that people have with their bodies that, you know, I don't want to tell anyone the wrong information. Like that's, that feels like a big deal to me. I take that, like, like I was saying, like, you know, I take that very seriously. I don't want to hurt anybody. Um, I I guess I've been a little bit, well, that's not a challenge, but um, sometimes I don't know what to, like, it's a challenge of what I want to teach versus what I think people are expecting. That's, mm. that's hard. Yeah. Where my style of teaching is very, like, gentle and, like, very, like, in within limits and mm -hmm. subtle, I guess, things mm -hmm. that I want to point out. And I worry that people want something, like, you know, hot and super power yoga, and I'm just, like, not prepared to give that. And I, I mean, I think I'm a very, like, nurturing person by nature, if that's <laughs> that makes any yes. sense. I don't know. Um, you know, I really like to make sure people are taken care of. So um, I already, you know, my practice, I'm a nutritionist by day, so I just see, like, the body as a whole and the way that, you know, the, the way that we treat ourselves and the way that we're eating and things like that and what that means for our body. So it's just a very natural thing. It could almost just be like glowing lights of like, yeah. you know, if I see that like people are eating just like gray things, I'm just like, oh no, like that's not good for you, you know. Um, so same with like movement and lack thereof. I'm just like, you know, I can see if somebody is like just like missing that part. So it's sort of just been like a nice extension of, of that. And sometimes it's great and sometimes it's, it's challenging because I feel like a lot of empathy for people. Um, so when I see people that aren't taking very good care of themselves, um, I like, it like hurts <laughs> sort of, you yeah. know, like, yeah. um, whether it be, you know, yeah, like just bad posture or smoking or excessive like dieting and things like that. It just like, I'm just like, oh, like, no, <laughs> like there's so many vegetables in the world. Like just include <laughs> them in things. No, they just want to be included in your day. You never, nobody's ever been like at an unhealthy weight because they like ate too much vegetables, you know, for the most part. And, and I'm not saying it because it's like I'm like on my hilltop or anything, but are you vegetarian? They're just good for you. I'm not a vegetarian. Mm -mm. Nope. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I eat meat. I, I don't eat it a lot. Like, for, I mean, I, I guess I, I, like tonight I had like sog paneer for dinner, so like. I just, like, choose things that are vegetarian, like, semi-often, but more so I just like to include, include the vegetables and fruits. Like, if I'm having something that doesn't have any, I will make, like, a steamed, 
pot of green beans or something to go with it. And that's, I don't know, that's how I keep it balanced, I guess. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for talking. Yeah. Okay. Come to Colleen's classes.